Hi, as I'm class, welcome to your uh, computing lesson this week. Today's date is the 23rd of February, 2021. Uh, so <clears throat> before half term, you were doing a whole project or you were doing a whole module basically on digital literacy and we were looking at e-safety and that tied in nicely with the last week on the 9th of February where we had e-safety day, uh, which uh, the whole of the country um, <clears throat> got involved with. And it was really good to see that you guys have a very good understanding of uh, internet safety. Some of you may need to just do a little bit more in terms of being more aware uh, of online, but overall, everyone did a really good job. So uh, well done to everyone during that topic. We're now moving on, and I thought it'd be a nice little project to do uh, as, as almost like a whole school. Uh, and um, so no matter what year group you're in, hopefully you're going to be doing some sort of stop animation uh, to, to, to create, uh, uh, at the end of it, your own animation um, that you can share on Tapestry or hopefully when we're back in school, we can share it in school. Um, <clears throat> so year four is going to be a little bit different. We, 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 we're going to be, obviously, it's going to maybe look different to what someone will do in year one or year two. Uh, but the first lesson today is a bit of theory, okay? Because you need to know where all this stop animation and where moving pictures came from. So um, this is what today's lesson is all about. It's all about you understanding where moving pictures came from and how that's developed over the years to what we have today. And the actual process is um, of filmmaking from back then to today is still very, very similar. The technology has changed, but the actual um, process of filmmaking and making moving pictures is exactly the same. Uh, it's just with different technology. So I'm gonna share the screen and we're gonna have a look at today's lesson. And let's just make it a bit bigger. So here we are. Now, today is all about understanding what stop animation is. And uh, here is a picture uh, below. Some of you may know who this is, uh, who these characters are. Some of you may not know. These characters are called Wallace, who is the man here, and his dog is called Gromit. These two uh, characters were made very famous in the 90s, so 1990s. Uh, where Nick Park, who was the creator of these, had painstakingly made a feature length, I say feature length, it was about a 20 minute, 25 minute long uh, episode of these two characters jetting off to the moon to collect cheese. Um, and the way he did it was he made these characters, uh, Wallace and Gromit out of Play-Doh almost, but some sort of plasticine. And they would take pictures of every single moment and then tweak it, move it slightly, and then take another picture. They had all these pictures together, which they then create into moving pictures. And we're going to explore how they may have done that in today's lesson. Uh, you may want to watch this at some point whilst we're doing this, just to get you uh, in the mood. Um, also, when you watch it, you, when you watch uh, stop animation with plasticine, uh, sometimes you see the fingerprints of the people actually molding them in that uh, in, in the films. Uh, so yeah, this is an interesting fact. Okay, so where did moving pictures all begin? Where did it come from? So in 19, sorry, not in 1888. So we're talking here uh, over, over well over a hundred years. Uh, we're doing 110, 20, like 133 years ago uh, in New York, uh, the inventor, Thomas Edison, who you should know about, uh, and his British assistants, William Dickinson, Dickinson, they were a bit concerned that other people uh, were ad more advanced than them when it came to uh, taking still pictures and moving pictures. And of course, these two, Thomas Edison was a big inventor. And of course, he wanted to be the best. He all wanted to be at the top. This was at a time when he was at the top and he didn't want anyone else to take the, take the glory from him. So they went out to create a device where you could watch moving pictures. And in 1890, Dickerson unveiled this big machine down here, uh, which he has called the Kinotograph. Okay, now let's break this word Kino down so you can understand it just a little bit better. 
Uh, so keen, okay, keen is to, uh, your, is the Latin word for move, uh, kinetics. It means movement, okay? Uh, and the graph means a picture, okay? So moving picture, that's how this word has been created. So keener graph, okay? And here is the picture of the, uh, of the keynote graph. Okay, you can see it's very complex. You can see it, it's quite a big machine. Um, but this machine was able to show a reel of moving pictures, which could then be projected. But let's go back a few years before this, because they were obviously worried that others were gaining ground. So let's go back a few more years. There were other devices beforehand that were uh, portraying moving images. Now, this is called a fenastigos, a fenastic, a fenaxtiscope. This was invented in 1832. And all it was was a, a disc, a spinning disc with lots of pictures going around it. And we can have a look in this picture here. Okay. And we can see our pictures of uh, dancers. And um, you can see here that they are moving around and they're still images. These images are not moving. These are, pic these are pictures that are being drawn. And then in the middle here, you can see a, a little hole. In this hole would go like a stick or a rod, which, would, which you, you would then be able to spin. And then you would look over the top, okay, in one spot. And you may shine a light on this spot. And as you spin it, you'll, you'll see the, the, the picture moving. And it will look as if, if, if these characters are moving. Um, and that's what moving pictures are. They, they trick the eye. Even today, in the films you watch on TV, it's not, it hasn't been recorded. Even me now, I'm not being recorded with all my movements. What's happening is the camera is taking lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of photographs, okay? So quick, all right? And then it puts them all together and it creates this moving image. Um, so that's what happens with all cameras. You're just, video cameras take pictures very, very quickly. That is why you can actually, uh, nowadays when you're filming on a phone or something like that, you can, whilst you're watching it, you can just press a button and it will take that picture because you uh, are, it, it's several pictures that make up that moving image. Um, just an interesting fact. The next one was called a zoetrope, and this was invented in 1834. Now, this one was a little bit different from the uh, previous one. Instead of looking down at it like that, you could look at it face on like this. And instead of the pictures being on the disc, they were, being, they were surrounding uh, the, a circular platform here. And you can see here in this picture here, we've got a lion jumping onto the back of a horse after it's jumping uh, through a queue. And... Um, you can see these little slits here. You would look through the slits as you spin the zoetrope and uh, you would then be able to see the moving image. Now, these things were really designed as children's toys. Lots of children at these ages would, would have these because uh, they found it fun. Uh, but little did people know back then that this would be you know, worked upon to, to get what we get today. The next one is called a kinograph or a flip book. Now, we may, you may have had it done a flip book before. I used to do this when I was a kid all the time. Um, now, <clears throat> it was created in 1866. Uh, now, it says here there is a video of a clip book in action. Uh, I haven't actually got that clip. Unfortunately, it wouldn't go onto these slides. Uh, but if you go onto YouTube and just type in flip books, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find one uh, where you can uh, have a look at so just a little bit more background information before we get onto the nitty gritty of things. Uh, now, this, this isn't a spelling mistake. This is how you spell his name. E. Edward, okay, not Edward, E. Edward Maybridge. Now, in uh, 1883, I think it was, or 1886, he was uh, given the task to find out whether horses, when they run, all hoofs are actually off the floor. Um, and of course, just by watching a horse, it's very difficult because they move so quickly when they're galloping. Uh, so he was, he was asked to find it out. And here are his famous pictures. 
he took 12 pictures and these 12 pictures, uh, they were 12 cameras, all in a line, all on rope. And as the horses were running past, he was taking the pictures uh, remotely. And um, these are the 12 images that he was able to capture. Once all these images were put together, you got the moving image of a horse. And he was able to see that in this picture here, how do we move this? Because we can move it. Uh, you can see here that all the horses' hooves are off the floor. And we can see here as well. So he was actually able uh, to find that when a horse is galloping, they are actually off the floor completely at some point whilst they're galloping. And even though this was for like, more for science, this these pictures became very famous and the, the work he did became very, very important for those who were then going into uh, for those who wanted to make films and make moving pictures, because here was someone who was actually able to do it. And that sort of process of taking pictures and then putting them together to make a moving picture is what we still use today. So filmmaking and animation, let's now move on to present day. So animation film is, is, is it's rapid display of a sequence of pictures which give the illusion that it is moving. So it's not actually moving, but it gives that impression that it's moving and it tricks the eye. And there is a video down here, of course, I can't play it because of copyright issues, but you can go click on the link in the description below and you can watch this, um, the, the, this, this video. Uh, now animation is normally played at a rate of 16 to 25 frames per second. So that means 25 images are being displayed very quickly next to each other in sequence in one second. And that speed enables us to see things quickly. Uh, nowadays, HD, you can get up to 60 frames per, per second. Uh, so it has evolved uh, as time goes on. Now, your tasks for today, you are going to do the following. Number one, you can make your own kinograph or a flip book and post it onto tapestry and it can be anything you like and i'm going to give some examples in a minute of what you could do and then for number two if you want a little bit more of a challenge you can actually create your own zoe trope and again i'm not going to be able to make one fully but i am going to give you the uh, materials that you may need to, to to do it and then the last one is to but if you really want to push yourself and you really want to sort of incorporate your writing skills into this, you can then write a report on how moving pictures came about. So how did they become famous and, and all of this? OK, so there are your three tasks. You only have to do one of them. Remember, you don't have to do all three. But task one is, 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 is the one that everyone should be able to do. And then the other ones are a little bit more challenging. Now. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I'm going to show you very quickly how you would maybe do your do your um, your your first task. So I'm going to stop the share. Okay, so what I've done, I've create, I've drawn very simply, uh, I've done my own kino kinograph, which is a flip book. Okay, and uh, I'm going to move the camera so you can kind of see what I've done here. So hopefully when I turn the camera over, you should be able to see uh, my, my, my book here. Okay. Now, luckily for me, when I got this diary, uh, I got it at Christmas. So I didn't need to use these months of this year. Now you can see here that I've created uh, just a little stick man. And all you need to do is you need to get a piece of paper uh, like a pad of paper and in the corner you can create your your, your own sort of image uh, and you can see here as I turn the page quickly it looks like the arm is moving and then of course now these in animation terms are called frames yeah, see that and then what you do is you 
uh, it may not work because it's normally best to do it in the corner so you can just flick it like that. Uh, but we can see here, we can give it a go. Okay, so you ready? It's not flicking. Uh, let's try it further down. Let's try it up here. Uh, I've flipped too many. It is difficult to do if you if, if you, you you need to get it quite tight and you need to flick it. Obviously, the faster you flick it, the, the better it is. I've got very thin paper, so my thumbs aren't actually, I'm not actually able to flick it like, like I would like to. Uh, but you can see here how, how the, the image is moving. Yeah, so that's called a kinograph, okay, or a flipbook. So obviously, you know, you can you can do one better uh, than mine. And the other task that I'm going to show you is the Zoe twin. you are going to need a, a, a circular disc. Um, it doesn't have to be a disc. It can be something else that's circular. If you've got a card, you can cut a circle out or something like that. But you're going to need this, something circular. You're going to need some tape and you're going to need some card and uh, some uh, uh, tape. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to cut a strip of paper that goes around your, your disc, right? So uh, you get a sheet of paper and you're going to cut a strip. Like that, okay? We've got our, our strip of paper. Now this should fit around our, our disc, okay? The first thing we need to do is draw some pictures on it. So what you do is you, uh, at each interval, uh, correct interval, you're going to uh, draw a picture. I'm just doing mine very quickly. Again, it's a stick man who's waving. At the camera. Okay, so there, so there it is. Okay, so I draw my series of pictures. Okay, I'm then going to circle this up. And I'm going to tape it at, like there. Okay, so you can see my image. Now you probably want to use a, a bigger sheet of paper to to do this. You should use scissors. Don't use your teeth. So there we go, I tape it up. Okay, so now I've got my circular thing. This then needs to get stuck onto your disc. Now I've used a smaller bit of paper, um, so it doesn't look as great. So you can see there now, uh, I need to tape this on. Uh, you may need an adult to help you with this. Okay. Uh, just to stick it on. I'm just doing mine very, very quickly. Okay. 
And then what you would do, you can see the images uh, going round the side. Uh, you would then have another piece of card. I haven't actually got it here. Going up the up the sides, uh, and you would have uh, you would cut holes going up so that when you spin it around, the screen. It's a shame because I haven't got I haven't got all the, the right equipment with me, uh, but you may have. And you, you stick it in the middle there like that. And then as it spins around, you look through the, the black card up here, which has slits in it. And as you spin it around, you should be able to see the, 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 the image moving. So you will need to get another bit of paper or card going around the edge. And you just cut little holes, little slits in, so that you're only seeing a little bit of the image. If you do it like this, all the images are blurred. Okay, so if you cut, if you get another piece of paper going around the set side and you cut holes in it, hopefully you should be able to see the individual images. If you are really stuck, I know my directions are probably not the best, you can always go online and you can have a look on there. So guys, uh, I hope you have fun doing this. Uh, I certainly have fun. Uh, <laughs> so um, I'll see you in the next video. Good luck and remember to post your work up into Tapestry. Bye-bye.